Well, folks, today we have some new stuff coming out there about Nintendo Switch 2. This is essentially being called a leak. I would probably still put it in the rumor territory personally because it's very hard to verify some of this stuff. It's coming out of Taiwan, which is, yes, one of the places Nintendo does get their parts manufactured. And this seems to be fairly legit from what I can check out. But again, this is just something we need to take with that grain of salt because it's not verified and obviously nintendo has not announced the system we have some specs coming out including a 120 hertz screen oh boy are we about to see you know over 60 fps in handheld on nintendo switch 2 everyone oh man i'm getting excited so what are we waiting for let's go ahead and dive in because we're getting this over on the gaming rumors and leaks subreddit because again it needed to be translated and like translation is kind of hard uh, from their language to English, but let's go ahead and look at what we have here. So it says Taiwanese Economic Forum reports the Nintendo Switch 2 will have a 20, 120 hertz screen, improved battery life, but only 8 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. This is a little bit of good with a little bit of bad. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. The source is right here. If you want to check it out, we'll link to this down below. This is a translation. It is widely rumored in the industry that Nintendo is expected to launch a new Switch this year to capture the market. In response to the pressure of global inflation and the weak yen, the price of the new product will be unprecedentedly raised. The retail price will be raised from $300 to $400, a 33% increase. Industry sources pointed out that during the initial launch of Switch, Nintendo's senior management formulated a core strategy of pricing the console just above cost to quickly penetrate the market, recovering the profits through the game software. This market strategy is indeed quite successful, but as a result, many suppliers are under considerable cost pressure. Now, as the price of the new generation products rise, the supply chains can breathe a sigh of relief. In addition, since the Switch has never had a major hardware update since its launch, the market expects that Nintendo is likely to launch a new generation in the second half of this year, and some hardware specifications will be upgraded, including NVIDIA's T239 processor. It's actually also a GPU. It's an APU. Anyways, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, and a greatly improved battery life. Oh, by the way, also a screen refresh rate of 120 hertz. Oh, man, this is really exciting. Now, a few things. Obviously, let's get to the negative parts here, the 8 gigabytes and the 64 gigabytes of storage. Obviously, we don't know where they're getting this information from. We presume it's coming from manufacturing. We don't know. Uh, we were a little concerned that it might be 8 gigabytes a while ago. Uh, it was always a possibility. 12 gigabytes seem more likely, and that's what we heard from people with dev kits, but also people with dev kits typically have more RAM than retail units anyways. So I don't really know what to think about that. Uh, does it have 8 gigabytes? Does it have 12 gigabytes? What really matters is that it has enough RAM for what the system's capable of. I know third-party companies are going to really want it to have 12 gigabytes of RAM. I fully understand that. But for what Nintendo's doing, maybe they only need 8 gigabytes. So that's something to keep just in the back of our minds that we're not 100% sure on this but this isn't necessarily great information the other one is the 64 gigabytes of storage look we have 64 gigabytes with the nintendo switch oled right this system right here this this zelda special edition oled it has 64 gigabytes of internal storage it would be a letdown to me if that's what the internal storage is even if they supported multiple micro sd cards which i think they sh absolutely should there's no reason they can't support multiple micro SD cards. Then I can put a couple one terabyte cards in there, and I don't know, I'm not even going to care. But the point is that having only 64 internal would be a letdown. But to me, it bare minimum has to have 128. You have to have enough to install any individual game. And then on top of that, I think 256 is much more appropriate. Now, remember, we have reports and rumors earlier that it could be as high as 512 gigabytes. Again, that could just be the storage available on dev units, not necessarily what's going to be at retail. So a lot of unknowns here when it comes to these negatives because we have some conflicting reports. Granted, the reports, this is the most recent report. Obviously, those other reports are several months old at this point. But this is where it gets exciting. The whole 120 hertz and greatly improved battery life what what is greatly improved battery life right now i get about two and a half sometimes three hours depending on what i'm playing if i'm playing tears of the kingdom i get about two and a half hours 
I might switch OLED to, you know, if I'm playing something that's a bit lighter, like an indie title or something, then yeah, it, I, I tend to get a little over three hours. But I do think that greatly improved battery life might be a bit of an exaggeration. If we're going from two and a half to just three hours, that is an improvement. Is that greatly improved? I mean, greatly improved to me is probably at least adding an extra hour or two of playtime. So I'm not sure that I buy the greatly improved. I think it might be being exaggerated. However, 120 hertz on the screen? Look, we've been talking about, will the screen be 720p still? Will it be 1080p? Some people think it'll be 4K. I think if they're going 120 hertz, they might stick with 720p. Just so you're not trying to target, if you want to target higher frame rates in handheld, maybe you don't want to go as high with the resolution. So, oh man, yeah, just imagining Nintendo entering a world of where, where some games can be above 60 FPS. Uh, that, it's wild to me because, look, we're, we were just hoping to get all third party and Nintendo games at 60 FPS or close to 60 FPS fully aware certain third-party games would probably still be 30 FPS. None of us were thinking something over 60, that potentially Nintendo could be targeting 120 FPS with some games. Kirby in the Forgotten Land 2, 120 FPS. Um, imagine the next Mario Kart game. What if that's one of the big selling points? Mario Kart 9, Deluxe, X Edition, Crossroads. 120 hertz, 120 FPS. Let's go! I like that. That's so exciting to me. Like I look as someone who games on PCs, I know the massive benefits of having over 60 FPS. Like 60 FPS, something we constantly talk about. It. It's the normal refresh rate of a lot of TVs and a lot of like PC monitors. Like that's like the base refresh rate. But look, if you've ever gamed at 100 plus FPS, you know how great it feels, especially if you're super sensitive to input latency and controls and twitchiness. Like it, it's great. Now again. It, having a 120 hertz screen doesn't mean all the games are suddenly going to be 120 FPS. It would only be very specific situations. Now, again, I think we need to do, just remind ourselves, we got to treat this as a rumor. This is coming from a, Thai, a Taiwanese place, a money.udn.com. It is a report that they're putting out there. They're not treating it like a rumor. They're treating it like this is just information that they have. I don't know where they got this information from. It's also important to note uh, this place did get a few things wrong about Nintendo Switch back in the day, but then it conversely got things right about Switch Lite and Switch OLED. So the track record isn't like a 100% thing in reporting on Nintendo, but it at least sets the bar that we can maybe expect a few things. Like, hey, maybe instead of 12 gigabytes, it's 8 gigabytes. Now we got two different expectations on the RAM. Uh, the storage, hey, we were hoping 256. Would Nintendo cheap out and go as low as 64? Maybe. I can, I, I'm not going to put it past Nintendo to do Nintendo things like that. And yeah, will it have improved battery life? I guess that's probably left up to what game you're playing. But the refresh rate. We weren't even talking about 120 hertz until today. Now this is going to be on my mind. And now I'm going to start wondering like what games Nintendo makes that could really benefit. Like, yeah, Mario Kart is very obvious. Uh, it'd be nice if a Smash Bros game could get up there. I don't know if that's possible, especially when you're doing eight-player Smash. But it, it's nice to think about. Uh, Splatoon, man, the next Splatoon, like Splatoon 4 or a Splatoon 3 port being at 120 FPS. Oh, baby, give that to me right now. That would be so awesome. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejads from Nintendo Prime. Are you excited by this? Are you concerned by it? I have no idea. This is a bit of both. Again, this is just a report that's out there. Don't know how true it is. That's why I said maybe treat it more as a rumor, even though they're calling it a leak. And so we use the term leak, but it's, uh, you know what I mean? It's a little iffy. You know, regardless of what my titles and thumbnails say and everything, when you watch the content and gain the context, I want people to understand fully that this isn't a 100% thing. Nothing really is until Nintendo announces it. Thank you so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Brian, bringing you the latest on Nintendo Switch 2, and I'll catch you in the next video.